focusing on chemical energy, which is at the molecular level, we can't see the bonds that are broken and formed in a chemical reaction. Those are energy changes that occur when bonds are broken in reactants, atoms are rearranged, and then new bonds are formed, and that is the resulting products. So breaking bonds always will require an initial input of energy, and there can be uh, an output of energy, which would be the exothermic, or that there was so much initial energy required that there's still going to be energy required to form the bonds. So we'll focus on the chemical reaction that's combustion. So that's when you have oxygen as a reactant and some fuel. Uh, we're going to be looking at this first example of methane gas, that's CH4, which is a hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbon, most of the hydrocarbon reactions will release energy, and that's why they're so common, is because we use that energy uh, for generating en electricity for the grid. And we'll look at the different ways, starting with the fossil fuels that are used to generate electricity for the grid, and methane, or burning natural gas, is one of them. So this releases a lot of energy in the form of heat, and you also have products which are for hydrocarbons, always carbon dioxide and water, CO2 and H2O. So here's the worksheet, and what you'll want to do is fill out this worksheet as we go along for each energy source and include drawbacks of each energy source, whether it's coal or oil or natural gas. The alternative fuels will also have drawbacks, and we'll, get, we'll be getting into those as well. So hydrocarbons are fuels in combustion reactions and uh, there are not only fossil fuels, there's also candles, wood, paper, um, sugars and carbohydrates in food are also combustion reactions but we're going to focus on the big the big uh, energy generating electricity for the grid combustion reactions. We've already had coal-fired power plants introduced when talking about air pollutants. Now why is coal used to generate electricity for a grid or for a factory. It's because coal is a very concentrated hydrocarbon. Um, so coal is, uh, it, we saw it in the carbon cycle, minerals in rocks and should be res reservoirs of carbon stored underground. It's, coal was formed over millions of years. This was uh, 65 million years ago, it was believed an asteroid hit Earth and that everything died at once and this was all just left where it was, rotted um, and became over years. These various forms, most commonly these uh, coal, this type of coal, lignite, bituminous and anthracite, but all of this coal is uh, dug up from underground, it's mined and it is uh, through the millions of years, a very complex mix of carbon and hydrogen mostly. We can see from the chemical formula, it's C135, that's 135 carbons, plus 96 hydrogens, and a few extra uh, atoms. So it's not only hydrocarbon, it's mostly hydrocarbon, but there's also some oxygen, there's also one nitrogen, and there's also one sulfur per single molecule, which is a very, very, very large molecule. So it's because of the nitrogen and sulfur atoms that coal produces as a side reaction those air pollutants NO2 and SO2. It's because the nitrogen atom is in coal as well as a sulfur atom is in coal. So even though I call coal a hydrocarbon, it actually has a few extra atoms in there in addition to the carbon and hydrogen. This is a schematic of a electricity generation at a coal-fired power plant. Now this schematic we'll see repeated in other electricity generating plants. What changes is how the heat is generated to boil water. So looking here on the left, there's a burner. This black strip is the coal that would be burned in a combustion reaction. So this first step one is a reaction. It's a chemical reaction. And the energy conversion is the chemical energy from coal is turned into radiant energy that's heat. 
So that heat is used to boil water in a closed system. So this is water in a closed system with all these pipes. And then it's also against another closed system that is water to cool off the, the back end here. So first this closed system that's the boiler is that that heat is used to boil water that turns into steam and is pushed in through this pipe. So steam uh, means that the water absorbed the radiant energy and in becoming gas those molecules started moving faster from liquid uh, slow moving to faster moving gas molecules that's movement so this is a conversion of radiant energy to mechanical energy when it's motion so the steam is a gas that moves through the pipes and then moves literally the blades of this turbine so a turbine is a fan that is not plugged in but it moves the, the fan blades move instead of being plugged in because there's steam passing through here in this closed system. So as the turbine blades move, it causes the generator to rotate. And where there are magnets attached to the generator, that leads to generation of electricity. And so it has to, the generator will only um, generate electricity if it's moving and it's moving because of the turbine. And so this is a conversion here of the mechanical energy from the steam moving the turbine blades into electrical energy that's generated for the grid. Fossil fuels in combustion reactions we know is a major contributor of atmospheric carbon dioxide. That's the product of a combustion reaction for hydrocarbons. It's carbon dioxide and water. This is a picture of a coal-fired power plant. And what is all this white stuff? Is it smoke? Is it air pollution? No, what it is actually, it is water vapor. So this is steam from cooling off that coal, the hot water that went through the system. It was in the back end power plant, we've looked at the energy conversions in the previous slide, but their uh, coal-fired power plant has these conversions of energy that are inevitably inefficient. And that's because there's a lot of heat lost. And so that's because heat is lost to just the surroundings, the system. And so you can see this is that the first step was coal that's burned in a combustion reaction and then used to boil water. And so this, anytime there's a, fi a fire, flame, combustion reaction, things get hot. And so this whole area around there is hot and the whole area inside of a coal-fired power plant is hot. And that's heat lost to the surroundings. This is also the boilers. They're made out of metal and these are all hot too. And so this is also a waste of heat, which is uh, useless energy when it's lost to the surroundings. You don't actually get a 100% conversion that you should get from all those bonds, but you get about, you get half or less than half. And that's because a lot of energy is lost to heat, which doesn't, is not useful heat. It's not being used, it's not enough heat to, to generate the steam to generate the electricity in the turbine. Coal was one of the first fuels used. Uh, and so in this graph, this is consumption of energy in the United States since the beginning, 1776, to almost current. And we can see that on this um, x-axis, the first is this kind of dark green, which is wood. Okay, So we were burning wood for keeping homes warm and also for cooking. So what happened is, is this purple which is coal. So coal is this purple line that started around the 18, after 1850s, around 1867, you can see this purple line, which is the realization that you could yield more energy, uh, more heat energy per mass or the grams of coal compared to wood. And so coal could basically keep a home warm overnight compared to wood, you keep having to add more wood to the fire. Uh, now, though, it's being used a lot greater, not just for keeping homes warm, but for electricity. And this is generating electricity for the grid, like in the coal-fired power plant schematic that we just looked at. Uh, one reason why coal is popular not only in the U.S., but all over the world is because there are deposits of coal that are available by mining, by digging it up, all over Earth. So coal is widely used by countries all over, the, all over Earth. Now we're going to return to this figure, but first let's look at some of the drawbacks of coal. So we already know about the air pollutants. It's not just NO2 and SO2, but it's also soot. Soot are the larger particles. This is 
uh, PM 2.5 and PM 10. And so this is particulate matter. And that is something that is more dangerous, um, particularly if it's particulate matter 2.5 that is um, able to pass through the lung tissue and into the bloodstream. So this is a picture of um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1940. And this is at 11 in the morning. And this is 11 in the morning. It looks like it's uh, might as well be 11 at night. Why? Because of all those air pollutants and Pittsburgh used to be uh, very near a lot of coal-fired factories um, that made steel. So this is Pittsburgh if you are familiar with the Steelers that um, was because of the the steel towns in Pennsylvania. So this is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and uh, the air pollution is not that not not problematic in Pennsylvania or anywhere in the US anymore thanks to the EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency has those air quality standards we talked about. So there's also the carbon dioxide emissions. Those are the bigger issue and that's also the, the largest product because that's leading to glo global warming and climate change. Now there's environmental costs of mining coal. So coal mining is dangerous. There are cave-ins, explosions, poisonous gases, and long-term respiratory diseases. And uh, there's also, the, so that's human health. Those are to coal miners that have to deal with the cave-ins and the explosions, the poisonous gases, and black lung, the long-term respiratory diseases. But also, there's environmental cost of humans that live within mining areas. So this is showing uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Homes were buried by 300 million gallons of coal sludge from a coal mine that uh, was basically flooded and just this mountaintop went down the mountain and overtook uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Showing on the x-axis the years, so 1988 to 2013, and on the y-axis is the world consumption of coal by the regions. So this is Asia Pacific is orange, and you can see this Asia Pacific, this is the high value. So Asia is the highest user of coal, and you might guess why, because they're using it to generate electricity, to generate electricity for factories, uh, and that those factories that make stuff like our iPhones or fill in the blank, the, the packaging for the, the plastics and everything you have. Um, so this is three times the use and so they have all the same issues with air pollution and mining and um, carbon dioxide emissions, but Thankfully, China did sign on to the Paris Agreement in 2015 and has pledged to remain with it. And by, by that process of being in the Paris Agreement, they have pledged to reduce their use of coal. And so since they're the highest user, users of coal, that's great. In the U.S., we are this North America, and so this is a lot less, but we are certainly a country that has led for decades in coal use.